Guys, my gear has gone Super Saiyan. I've upgraded aspects of it. I want to tell you about what I upgraded to and why I like it, as well as do a giveaway, because why not? Like I said, I, I've had the same gear for a long time and I decided it was time to make some gradual upgrades. When it comes to your turntable setup, you can upgrade a lot of aspects. You can upgrade your turntable, you can upgrade the cartridge, you can upgrade the needle, you can upgrade your receiver, you can upgrade your speakers. There's so many aspects and you don't need to do it all at once. The beautiful thing is that everything you start to upgrade will slowly help build you towards that perfect sound that you're looking for. And it can get very expensive if you try to upgrade all your gear at once. So it's best to kind of go piece by piece. Anything that's falling short of the rest of the gear, kind of just, uh, you know, upgrade that one so it lives up to the expectation of the rest. And it's a never ending game. Theoretically, you can just keep expanding your gear and keep getting better and better stuff and spending more and more money. And maybe you'll never be truly happy because there's always something better out there. But I will say it's worth it to upgrade your gear every now and then, especially if you kind of want to see what else is out there sonically, and if you think that your gear can sound better. For me, there were two things I wanted to do. First off was my receiver. Since I started listening to records, I have had this beautiful Pioneer SX790. There she is. It's a great receiver from the 70s, it has great sound capabilities, and it's really powerful for what it is. It also has a lot of warmth because it is from the 70s, it's not a digital receiver like something from the 90s or 2000s, so it doesn't digitize the sound at all. It's purely an analog receiver, which is great. It's a phono receiver, so it works great with the turntable. Something I noticed the whole time that I had the receiver is when you turn uh, the volume knob up and down, it makes a crackling sound. I wasn't sure what caused that, but it didn't really bother me. I just thought it was because the receiver was old. But lately, before I had it serviced, I noticed that on some records, on high notes, I'd get a kind of staticky, like a ripping sound. Um, it wasn't sibilance, um, but it was definitely something that was not supposed to be there and it was only happening on certain notes so I knew it was something having to do with the playback in the receiver. So I looked into it and I was reading on some forums and they were saying that old receivers should be recapped. Something I didn't know about. Basically, you can take your receiver to any technician and hopefully they can do a full recap for you. What they'll do is they'll change some of the stuff internally to upgrade the parts, they will clean the controls for you, and adjust some settings so that it's almost good as new. And it really isn't as expensive as you may think it would be. I decided to do that. I found a gentleman on Yelp in my area that had great reviews. His name is Mike. Uh, he did a great job with my stuff. If you're LA based, I'm gonna leave his link in the description so you can check him out. If you need to get audio gear repaired, definitely recommend. Also, random side note, he has a band that he showed me his music. If you like electronic psych rock, these guys rock. The band's called Westerner. I'll leave a link for their music too. Hopefully I can catch them at a show soon. But I digress. What Mike did was he cleaned the controls and he recapped it and uh, it sounds great. I, I, there's a noticeable difference. First of all, the cleaning of the controls fixed the issue with the knob so it doesn't make that noise anymore. But all the issues I was having with some sound artifacting is gone. Everything sounds really clean. It sounds almost more powerful than it did before. And uh, the sound is the warm sound that I remember when I first got the receiver, um, which over time, I guess, has had some issues, deterioration and whatnot. If you have a receiver and it's over 10 years old, I recommend going to get it recapped. Um, I think it'll make a big difference for you. And I'm glad I, I'm glad I spent the money because I could have bought a new receiver, but this is such a nice piece to begin with that I think I would rather have fixed it than purchase something new. So good move there. Second thing I upgraded was my cartridge. What I had since I picked up the turntable was an Audio-Technica VS210E. Now, Audio-Technica cartridges can be very good. Uh, my cartridge never was an issue for me. It really made a lot of records sound great. Uh, it, no muddiness. I will say that Audio-Technica cartridges can be a little on the bright side, almost too bright sometimes, but I never thought that the sound could be different. I thought this was kind of like what my records would sound like, and then I did some more research on cartridges. They make a big difference. Something I didn't really know too much about was the world of how different a cartridge can sound from one to another in terms of, you know, how the bass sounds, how how the music in general sounds, the warmth, the, the how it plays over surface noise, and there's a big difference. There's a reason why people spend thousands of dollars on cartridges. Now, I don't have thousands of dollars to spend on a cartridge, but I did my research and the cartridge I found that I wanted to upgrade to was the Nagaoka MP110. Now, some may say that this is more of a side grade for my cartridge and it's just a change in sound versus an upgrade in sound. I may agree with that based on some early listening on the new cartridge, but I love the Nagaoka sound. 
I'm in love with it. When I was looking into what cartridge to get, I saw a random post on a random audio forum of someone talking about this cartridge. And the way they described it, I loved it. So I'm gonna read it for you. The cartridge is warm, detailed as a wide sound stage, killer of surface noise, lots of punch in the bass, and tracks like a mountain lion. <laughs> I gotta say, I agree with all of that. What's good about the Nagaoka is it really brings out the warm sound of vinyl that everyone loves. Some cartridges, you kind of lose that. This really makes the instruments pop, uh, especially on older records. I would say on newer records, depending on the genre it does, but older records, it, it feels like you're at a live show. It, it, it really feels warmer than my audio Technica cartridge, and I am really glad that I upgraded to it. I think it made a huge difference for me and my listening, and it actually will change the way I listen to my records, and I'm gonna listen to records I've been listening to for a long time and hear new things in a new way. So, if you haven't thought about upgrading your cartridge, definitely worth looking into. I'm gonna link to the Nagaoka in the description if you wanna buy it, I recommend it. It's a great cartridge, especially if you're not trying to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars. I think it's around 150 definitely worth it. I mentioned a giveaway in the beginning of this video and I was not lying to you guys. We are doing a giveaway thanks to our friends at Vinyl Moon. Now, Vinyl Moon, I've talked about them before. It's a vinyl subscription service where they give you 10 up and coming artists every single month on a deluxe vinyl package. And there's an emphasis on deluxe because they always work with the visual artists to come up with the craziest packaging and artwork that I've ever seen on records. It's really hard to explain just how cool these records are. So, Vinyl Moon came up with this really interesting idea on how you guys can see it, and I love this. They have a page on their site that's called The Collection, which shows all of the records they've done up to this point. They have done 30 volumes so far. So clearly, it's working if they've been around for that long. My favorite volume is volume eight, Seed Shine. I can tell you about it, but this 15 second video that they made for it is gonna explain it a lot better. I love the fact that they have a pop-up that you can actually put on your turntable and it spins and it's a watermelon and the record itself looks cool, the art's beautiful with spot gloss, everything about it is deluxe and the music itself is great. To enter this contest, one lucky person is going to win the volume of their choice from the collection page, as long as it's not sold out, I think there are four or five volumes that are sold out, as well as the next Vinyl Moon to be released, which I believe is volume 31. So to enter, go to the collection page, it's gonna be in the description, look at all the awesome records they have, and pick which one is visually your favorite. Leave a comment and you will be entered to win. This is an international contest, so anyone who watches this video can enter. Best of luck to you guys. I look forward to seeing which records you think are your favorites. All right guys, that's the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up, please subscribe. More videos soon.